Hi everybody, Luke Galan here from the YT624EJ Maintenance Channel. What better thing to do on a Saturday night at 9 a.m. than to start filming one of these videos? I'm gonna do something in this video that I've neglected to do for a long time. It's borderline shameful. I don't think any Yamaha owner should uh, behave this way, but it's the auger height and the, well, the skid height, the auger height and the scraper height. I'm gonna check all those things out and uh, take some measurements, make some adjustments. For everybody's information, Right now, when I snow blow the driveway, the auger hits the interlock sometimes, depending on the configuration. So it's not really ideal because you feel this chomping thing. It's hard on the interlock, hard on the auger. However, it gets right down to the to the to the to the bricks there. So anyway, let's get going and get this done. So here we have the relevant sections on checking the skid. And we find here that five millimeters is the recommended distance between the auger and the road surface. And using the uh, skid feet here. So we'll proceed to that. As well, here's the section on checking the scraper. So it says to check the scraper underneath. And that it recommends that the scraper height uh, should be higher than the auger height. So the clearance C must be equal or greater than the clearance D. So we're gonna go ahead and measure those clearances and check things out on uh, this one that's not been adjusted yet. So like most things on this channel, we're gonna go for broke and use some really high precision feeler gauges to measure the clearance on my tile floor. Um, when I say go for broke, I just mean that we're gonna celebrate excessiveness and not be ashamed of it in any way. So we're gonna measure then thickness of feeler gauges we've got two millimeters two millimeters is quite a ways from five then let's check our scraper our scraper is pretty well touching the floor so that's not good that is nowhere near Yamaha OEM specification 1.56 millimeters from the floor so we're going to proceed now to removing the skid shoes and giving them a good inspection All right, guys. So before I did this video, I had inspected these just from a side view to see how they looked like. And I had seen that the the one, actually the right one, had this crack. So here's a view of that crack. And it runs through to the bottom to the other side. And actually, on top, there's a little bit of a crack here. But anyway, so I had ordered new uh, shoes as a preliminary. Anyway, the, the one shoe actually looks perfect. There's the brand new one looks perfect, no cracks. But the other one seems to have a crack that kind of probably resulted from the cooling. You can kind of see it in there. Um, it, it's pretty small, it's, it's in there. And so I kind of told the parts guy when I opened it, I'll look at this crack, oh yeah, well. So finally I kept them. So if I take the new one, or say, sorry, I'll take the one I've got now, measure it, 26.15. Here, I've got 27.6. So I, I've lost a millimeter and a half. So I, I could change these, but what I'll probably do is keep running this one. If ever it cracks to the point where it breaks in half, I, I think it'll last a long time. But anyway, I'll have these on standby, which is fine. So what I'm gonna do now is, is put these back in and then adjust the height to that five millimeters described in the book. Um, and then I'll proceed to the scraper. All right, so I've pre-measured out five millimeters. It's actually the thickness of this wrench. So I'm gonna put this wrench under the auger. I'll lift the front to make sure the auger is at that height. Then I'll drop the shoes down to get that fitment. All right, guys, so before performing this adjustment, you really wanna get the snowblower up, lift it, and drop the, the, the tracks. Okay, that's how all these adjustments need to be performed. All right, guys, I've laid the snowblower down and used the rear cylinder to get it to sit on that wrench, which is five millimeters of height on the auger. So I'm gonna proceed now to putting the shoes in there. All right, guys. So we're gonna give these studs a quick brush to get all the sand and grit out of there. Nothing without Loctite, please, for your own sake and for your snowblower's sake, please. But again, do whatever you like. I'm gonna put, put the shoe back on there. So to me, I'm gonna put that shoe laying there. All right, guys, one of the findings is that the whole housing is a bit crooked. So I'm going to take the baseline from the side there under this point. I'm going to see how much space is under the, the housing. And I've done that on that side. It's about 14.3 uh, millimeters. I'm just going to 
<clears throat> raise this shoe a little bit so that it looks more balanced. Because what I've seen there is that the, uh, the height of the scraper doesn't look very consistent. And it's because of this. There we go. So torque value for this is 16 newton meters or 142 inch pounds. All right, let's move on to the scraper. All right, so with the uh, housing leveled, the, the auger's at the right height, but I gotta get that, that scraper up some more. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen all the stuff. So we're gonna use now a 10 millimeter socket in order to get this all loose. We may not be able to do that one. Let's take this out anyway to have a good look at it. So here we see there's actually not too much dirt in there. A little bit of moisture. Actually, that might be the WD-40. Yeah, that's the WD-40 I sprayed. So what we're gonna do now is clean the, uh, the auger housing of any dirt before we make the adjustment. And we'll make that, we'll put it back in and make the adjustment. All right, so I put Loctite on the end bolts, even though there's a lock washer, I put Loctite on those bolts because the nut isn't a locking nut. And on the back nuts, I didn't put any Loctite because those are all locking nuts. So I've snugged them all up. I'm gonna put a, um, maybe a six, six to seven millimeter height under the scraper um, and then lay the snowblower back down. So I've gone and lifted the snowblower at the back, let the tracks down. I've put one wrench underneath. I've, I'm gonna put the other one. So all I did is I put the the caliper to see where I would get, and I got 7.3 millimeters. So in this case, it's in the middle of this wrench. So I'm gonna lift the blower, and stick that underneath. Now I know um, that that height's there. I think what I might do is I'll increase it a bit considering with the flex, everything seemed to come down a bit. Let me move it ahead a bit. There we go, let's do that. There. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that stuff there. Oh, it's too bad my 12 mil wrench is under there. That's, that's awesome. All right guys, so one of the lessons learned in doing this uh, scraper height adjustment is that you have to move the scraper up and then bring the snowblower down into its own weight. Then you can adjust the scraper back down to the height it needs to be at. If the scraper is down too far and you wanna kind of bring the blower up to get the scraper to move up, I think it'll bind in there and it won't move up for you. So in this case here, the scraper's adjusted back to kind of where it was before. Um, and, and now it measures higher than the, than the auger. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque these bolts now, but that's just an important point. So for these other bolts, we've got uh, nine Newton meters or 80 inch pounds. All right, guys. So I'm checking out the auger height, the scraper height, and it all looks level. And I can see that both sides looks quite level. So I would keep the housing height in mind on both sides when you set the shoes initially. So I would set to the auger to have that five millimeter minimum clearance and then, and then set the shoes, but make sure that your housing is level. And then from there you can proceed to setting the uh, scraper height, but make sure with the scraper that you allow it to move up because it will bind uh, and, 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 and offset your, your proper heights. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll look forward to getting some more made. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. I thought I would do a post adjustment uh, video just showing what this adjustment does in terms of surface finish on the driveway. So again, I had my auger set to five millimeters and I had the, uh, the, the blade to seven millimeters. That's what I did using the, uh, the skid shoes. So I'll turn the camera around here and just show. All right, so here we've got the, uh, the finish. So I mean, it's, 
It's a bit as it was before, maybe a little bit more height, but it's tolerable. At least the auger's not hitting. Here I've got more of a flat surface back here, and you know, it's it's okay. It leaves a little bit of snow. The, uh, the blade could be lower just a little bit, but I'm not gonna repeat that for this video, but I might do it on my own. So I reread the manual, and it says to set the, the auger blade to the same height or higher than the uh, auger itself. So I might lower the blade a little bit. Part of me thinks, well, why can't the blade be lowered right down so it scrapes everything up? But what I found here, when I just, just passed it, is that the shoes were helping support the unit and preventing the auger housing from digging into the ground. So, you know, actually it, it, it passed much easier than it usually does. All right, thanks for watching.